Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Having tens of thousands of snakes certainly means that we don't get all of them in the show. And the other day I was looking around and saw some really awesome animals I wanted to show you guys. So today I'm gonna walk around and just show you a bunch of cool stuff. You're watching Snake Bites. So what happened was the other day I had some company over and I was showing them a bunch of snakes and I realized they hadn't seen any of them in the show before so I thought it was an awesome opportunity to show you some things that we just don't get in the show but are still really cool. You guys know that I love hognose snakes and I show you a bunch of different kinds but this is kind of an unusual one. This is a toffee belly. They're not super uncommon but you don't see them around too much. They're obviously hypomelanistic but again they get their namesake from that toffee color on their belly. I tell you what, an animal that's really interesting, and I've worked on this project for probably 10 plus years, is these granite Max Max. And you can see these guys are actually called San Luis Potosi Kings, or short for Max Max, but this one's all granite and patterned out. You can see it's just little freckles, and that's what we're actually going for. A normal one looks a lot more like this. This is the beginnings of a granite phase, but you can see that it's got much more red in it. And this is actually already a pretty nice graniteed one, but you can see where we're reducing all of the pattern on these granites, and, and I just love that project. All right, so we talk a lot about hog nose, and we even talk about tricolors from time to time. But this snake has the best of both worlds, and that's a tricolored hog nose. Now these aren't the same species as the western hog nose snakes, but they are still known as a hog nose snake, and obviously they're tricolors as well. Again, this is not a hybrid. This is an animal that you can find in the wild, and the thing that's really interesting about these guys is they'll have eight or ten clutches of eggs a year. These guys are literally little production machines. The babies are a little bit tough to get started to feed, but once they get going, they absolutely do incredible, and it's an animal that certainly you don't see nearly as much as I'd like people to check out. All right, guys, it's Cal's question of the week. Now, a couple days ago was Valentine's Day, and love is still in the air. But I was watching a show, two guys exchanged Valentine's, and that started making out. What do you think about the whole idea of gay marriage, George? I am personally fine with it. If you want to go marry a shoe, go ahead. Want to marry a toothbrush? Go ahead. Want to marry a monkey? All right, all right, go all right, ahead. All right, all right. The thing I worry about is that my daughter watches TV, and if she sees this, is she encouraged to do the same thing? That's what worries me. I don't necessarily have a problem with gay marriage. I don't necessarily agree with it or encourage it. That's my opinion. Let me know yours. Text or video comment below. Moving on, I've showed albino Arizona mountain kings before, but I've never shown the hypo Arizona mountain kings. Now these are what they call the sense line hypo, and basically you can see where the black would normally be is almost like a purplish brown color. And there's two versions. We actually have a line that's called the BHB line, but the sense line honestly is a little bit prettier, and it's an animal that I'm working a lot with compared to the BHB line. And if you can really see, they actually even have red pupils, which makes these things so cool. And Arizona mountain kings in their self are relatively cool animals. They're, they're a smaller milk snake, they do really well in captivity, and they produce small numbers of eggs, so you don't see these guys all over the place. I really like this guy here. This is actually a charcoal lavender hypo corn snake. So there's a lot going on with it, and as you can see, it's got that really ghostly pattern that I think makes it really unique, and the color is very interesting. Uh, again, the lavender comes out, and the charcoal is lacking both red pigment and yellow pigment, and that's what really gives this lavender that ghostly appearance. We've shown these snakes before, but I was walking by this rack, and I love these animals so much, I have to show them to you anyways. This is a little baby Woma python, and these guys are just so incredible. I talk about how cool Woma pythons are, and how they're just incredible pets. They do really well. This is what they're like as babies, and as you can see, they're just such cool animals. I love the little eyebrows on them. Again, anything Australian and python is super cool, and Womas are definitely top on my list. These are rough tail Samboas. And what's neat about Samboas is the fact that they have live young. Now, Kenyan Samboas, I've had litters up to 30 plus babies. These rough scales, my largest litter ever was 10 babies. And an animal this size is actually a little too small to breed. Once she gets about another six inches or so, she might have six babies at the best. Another cool Samboa are those Eryx Johnny or Indian Smooth Scales. 
And you can see these guys get really big for a sandboy. They're one of the biggest sandboys, and when they're born, they're absolutely stunning. They're orange with like black bands right down the back. You can see a little bit of the pattern still coming through where the black bands are right here, but as they get bigger, they definitely dull out. These guys have absolutely huge babies. Again, they're live bearers just like any of the other sand boas, but they'll only have about six babies that are large enough to eat large fuzzies or even small mice right off the bat. And this is absolutely one of my favorite snakes that I produced this last year. It's been something I've been working on for a few years. I love Everglades rat snakes. I know they're not the most popular snake in the world, but I just have always really loved them because they get so beautiful and orange when they get older. Now this is actually a mutation called a ghost glades, but then it actually has an albino gene on it too. So this is an albino ghost glades. And the attitude on these guys is one of the reasons why I really like them. Again, I can't wait till this animal gets a little larger because Everglades rat snakes get more colorful as they get sized. I guess my point of showing you these animals is just to let you guys know that there's tons of other animals out there other than corn snakes and ball pythons, even though those two animals are fantastic. There's just a plethora of animals that you guys can take a look at and maybe own one day. You hey, right? Yeah, it's okay. I think we got a serious problem, dude. What? Dorothy's back. What? The Dorothy? Yeah, listen, George has been acting really weird lately. Um, I could have sworn I heard Dorothy's voice. It could be my mind playing tricks on me, but I thought I saw him into that blue dress. Oh my god, I thought we were rid of her. I can't believe Well, before we get ahead of ourselves, just try to get concrete evidence before we freak out. Alright, dude. Whatever. So who's Dorothy? It was a character that we thought George was just kind of doing and it, it was an alter ego that, that really became a major problem. It took months and months of therapy, thousands of dollars of doctor bills to get George on track. I can't even express to you how terrifying it is to think about it. Okay, so listen up. I'm right here, I'm doing my work as usual, I hear this weird little giggle and I look over and right there in front of me is Dorothy. I keep telling everybody this. We gotta tell Brian about this. This is ridiculous. Everybody, nobody believes me. Did you see that? Come on, come on. I'll go right, you go left. Where is she? It's ridiculous. Come on. Come on, Brian. So I was back here pulling mice and I heard that distinctive, sexy, sensual giggle of hers. So how, how do you know it was Dorothy? Because I know. I've heard it a thousand times. It tingles my spine. It's. Um, do you hear that? That I told you she's back. Hey George, uh, how's it going? Good. How about yourself? Uh, pretty good. So, um, who's Dorothy? There is no Dorothy. Just George. Dorothy doesn't exist. Uh, but but the guys were telling me that that uh, something happened a while ago with Dorothy. With somebody named Dorothy? Look, I told you once already, there is no Dorothy. I don't want to talk to you about it. It's just George. Hey, Kel, come here. Check this out, man. What's going on? All right, dude. So I installed some hidden security cameras. When? Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, it's it's trying to catch Dorothy. we got to get this thing solved. I think I found the footage with her. Check this out. There she is. Holy she looks rough. She does look... Wow. What the wait, hell is Wait a that? second. What the f... Okay, wait. That's Dorothy, and then that's George. Do you think George really was telling the truth? Are you... Are you... <laughs> what the f is this? Are you seeing the same scene? They're supposed to be the same person. Holy f***, dude. What the f*** do? What the f*** do? For this week's comment of the week on the snakes questions episode, the question was, what are some of the questions that boggle your mind? And Croc1333 said, Great show today, BHB. Here is a paradox that boggles my mind. Time is made up of units that are bigger than the one before it, i.e. one hour is made up of 60 minutes, one minute is made up of 60 seconds. Eventually you get down down to a unit that is so small and so fast that it has no duration. Thus, how can time be made up of something that has no duration? Okay, uh, I think that one made me a little cross-eyed, guys. Uh, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode, as long as I can understand what the hell you're talking about. 
So there it is. I hope you guys enjoy the show and like seeing some of those animals that we just don't get the opportunity to get into the show too often. Over on the Snake Bites TV Facebook page, I want to give a huge shout out to avidherpers.com. Great job, guys. And remember, every Wednesday, we give your community an opportunity to get a shout out in the next show. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.